Hey guys, David from Sunday Sounds here, and today I've got something really special and a little bit out of the ordinary for you. Today I want to give you a breakdown of the aux keys, parts, and sounds that I recently put together for the first Worship Innovators Conference online. Now, if you're able to join us for the Worship Innovators Conference, I hope you had a good time. And there were a couple of worship sessions that we put together as part of that conference. Now, this format during the last year of COVID might be familiar to some of you. We all recorded our parts separately at home and then stitched them together in the final video. Now, actually, this isn't very different from how many of us prepare at home for any given worship set, especially even if it's in person, we're still preparing at home, figuring out our sounds and our parts without the rest of the band around us to inform our choices. So we have to prepare at home, make our best guess, and then put it all together during rehearsal or maybe even just on Sunday morning. Now, I'm also especially excited to give you this look because I was asked to play aux keys. So I'm not playing piano parts, I'm contributing texture elements and keys and synth parts. This is such a fun position to play in the band, but it doesn't get talked about as often, doesn't get as much attention. So today, I'm gonna to share with you how I really quickly analyze songs that I'm not very familiar with to make quick sound design choices, build some patches, and get ready to play. We did two short sets for the Innovators Conference. Uh, between the two, there were five songs total. I'd actually never played three of them during a live performance before. But all in, I spent about an hour preparing and then recorded both of these sets in one take, and I think it turned out pretty okay. So I'm excited to give you a look. I'm gonna head over to my computer, share my screen with you, and get into the specifics of how I put these sets together for the aux keys position. Let's check it out. Okay guys, so now you can see my screen. I'm gonna walk you through the patches that I put together for these two set lists. Now, one was put together by Jason from Worship Artistry. It was Good God Almighty, Sing Wherever I Go, and You Are the Lord. Now, it just so happened that I actually had not played any of these three songs before. I wasn't really that familiar with them at all. So this was a really great opportunity to sort of practice what we preach here at Sunday Sounds and use Patch Builder to make really quick decisions. Now, like I said, I was playing an aux keys role for uh, both of these set lists. So I didn't use any uh, piano sounds, no acoustic piano sounds. And I tried to leave a lot of space um, because someone else, uh, Ryan from Praise Charge, was going to be playing those parts. And I wanted to make sure I didn't get in the way. Um, so for these first two songs, uh, both actually had some good organ textures on the original song. And from the aux keys position, you can't get much more classic uh, than sort of an organ. So I used the B3 organ from Sunday Keys. And I'm using my Nano Control 2 here to manipulate the volume. I did a lot of uh, fader moving during these sets just to be dynamic and flow. And then I'm riding this rotor control a lot to increase the speed or decrease the speed of the rotor. And then the mod wheel here opens up the draw bars. So uh, really subtle stuff at the very beginning, just kind of holding some chords. And then we get to that first chorus. using that rotor just to move dynamically and add some swirl, pretty traditional B3 parts. Uh, then for the second chorus of this first song, I added in this Jericho Poly, which is like a nice lead or pad sound. Um, this song's by Crowder, and Crowder does a great job of blending these really earthy sounds and these almost techno-y, like EDM kind of synth sounds. And the blend of these two sounds I just thought was super cool, because there's this initial attack to the, the lead sound, the synth, and then it still just sounds like an organ sort of underneath it all. I'm still working that rotor as well. Um, and then by the end of the tune, I'm just adding in this ARP sound at about, you know, half or just above half volume. And I do predetermine the tempo of all the patches that need it. I actually like to include the song key and the tempo in the patch name. Then if I have to tap tempo for some reason in the moment and I need to get back to the original tempo, I don't have to go reference it, it's just in the patch name. It makes it super easy. So this ARP in here uh, is actually a sister patch to the poly. Um, you can tell by the name, but it's just a slightly different texture. It adds some pulsing energy beneath. So uh, at the final chorus, I'm playing it like this. And 
then for the final sort of tag out, uh, I'm just taking the parts up a bit like this. That little jump up an octave doesn't really complicate things at all for me. Just moving my hands further apart increases the energy. And then there's that really nice little melodic phrase that I'm playing to mirror the vocal at the very end. So. God so that's the first tune. Uh, it was a really fun one. I, I actually hadn't heard this song before getting it in the set list, and that's always kind of fun. Okay, uh, second tune was uh, Sing Wherever I Go by We The Kingdom. Again, sort of an, an organ driver kind of patch, but I was able to do some really fun stuff here. So I used the B3 organ again, but I also introduced this Salem reed organ. This is a Sunday key sound sampled from my actual reed organ here at my house. I've <laughs> lugged around the country for the last decade. Um, really cool, just a different organ texture. I wanted it to sound still like organy, but a little bit more of that rootsy thing. because that's a little bit more prominent in the mix at times and really thick, I didn't do as many uh, chordal voicings, just a lot of ones and fives, just kind of, uh, it's, I didn't want it to be too, too heavy in the lower mids and get muddy. And then I've got this SK glockenspiel up in the right hand, cut off right here, really specifically set that layer range right here. play those verses down without that bell, but I've also got that here if I want it. Oh, and then we'll talk about this one. This uh, Dream Rings is actually sort of a, it's a sampled Rhodes patch, but more of a sound bed. Bring everything else down so you can hear it. Got overdrive on there as well, making it just really grungy. But as you hold the notes, there are more octaves introduced. And I just thought it was really interesting. There's no pad on this sound other than the organs, but I really wanted just a little bit of sort of twinkle in the background. So this is really low in the mix, but you, you definitely notice it on the sustained parts. And it's just a really nice little way to add a little extra texture. And then the SK Glockenspiel, depending on when this video is coming out, the sound may not already be in Sunday Keys. It's uh, scheduled to come out in the July 2021 update to Sunday Keys. This is, uh, again, fully sampled Glockenspiel that I sampled here in my studio from an actual uh, orchestral set, Glockenspiel bell set. It sounds so much better than the stock main stage uh, bells. So then as this song builds, I'm not going to spend too much more time here, uh, the biggest moment here is just bringing up these two layers for the bridge. So that's really it for this song. It was really fun. Very much not like a typical worship song uh, in terms of the keys parts. So that was a blast. Uh, last thing I'll call out here is just the, the split between the organ and the glockenspiel here is really important. Uh, it took me a minute to dial that in. I actually arrived at these four sounds very quickly and then spent a little bit more time dialing in the layer ranges just to make the performance musical for me and give me that flexibility. So having the organ cut off right here Let's me do this stuff with this reed organ texture, the dream rings in the background, but it's mostly bells, and then the organ. It's just down here, kind of carrying things along. So this is a really fun one to put together. Last one from the first set was You Are the Lord. This is a really cool song by Passion. Uh, it has actually a really killer piano part, like a classic digital piano, I think an MKS-20, maybe mixed with a DX7 EP. And we've got those textures in Sunday keys, but. Again, I was asked to play aux key, so I wasn't able to, to take those on, um, but they are killer. So if you haven't listened to this song, you should check it out. Anyways, for this one, uh, I ended up with five layers, and uh, this song was really uh, sort of 
focused on the dynamics because there's a lot of transitions in the keys parts and sort of how much space the keys are taking up. So uh, one of my favorite sounds in Sunday keys is this retro bells sound. And the original recording has this little ambient riff that takes place in the intros. And I wanted to add just a little bit of pad ambience. So this retro bell sound actually gives me some of that. And then I've got the this string pad here in as well. So this is where I was at for a lot of the verses. And then there's this transition that I had to pull off live between the verse texture, which is this retro bell, and this Jericho poly again, which I chose to use for uh, the chorus. There's this really cool syncopated part. I think it's an ARP in the original, but I wanted to do it freehand. So it goes like this. killer keys part. I wanted to do it live rather than programming it as a sequence or an ARP because I wanted flexibility in my note choices a little bit. At the end of the song, I change up the ARP to add some more intensity. There's always that balance between programming something out and knowing it's going to be executed well or having the control to respond. Now for a pre-recorded set like this, I had no idea what anybody else in the band was playing other than probably something similar to the original recording. But for a live performance where you got real people on stage with you, maybe your guitarist gets inspired and starts stepping on your toes a little bit. You want to be able to pull back and make room for them in the moment. Or maybe you notice that somebody broke a string and there's a little bit more space for you to fill. Having that right hand able to actually contribute those parts dynamically, something that's really useful. So as the song builds, I bring these bells back in for the second chorus, maybe increase the volume of these of the string pad. <laughs> We're there, the mod wheel's bringing up the brightness. Then the, by the time we get to this nice big bridge, which is a sort of a chugga chugga build, um, I actually strip the part down in the right hand, but I'm bringing in this sub bass, which I have in the extra section here. Um, and I'm playing just single notes in the left hand now, so that bass is nice and clean. So we're just leaving lots of room for the build that everybody else is doing. So a lot of these slower notes. And I think uh, when I did this live, I actually brought the volume of this poly lead up a little bit for this part as well. Out of that bridge, we're hitting that two above because then when we come back down to the one for the chorus, the final chorus, it's really satisfying. So by the time we get to that final chorus, mod wheels all the uh, all the way up, we're full brightness. And then the last thing I'm bringing in is this fantastical arp. Now, this is sort of a slow arp. Took me a second to get it really dialed in to where I was feeling synced in with it, but it adds just a little extra momentum and extra energy and push. Let me see if I can do this without a metronome running. So we're playing the same parts, but we're just, um, all these parts, uh, these sounds are sort of adding things in and adding some more density. So that's uh, that's this the big moment of the song. There's a, a repeat of the chorus at the very end. And what I chose to do there musically was to depart from this motif that I've done for every chorus and instead sort of take some a nod from almost what to me I was approaching it as like an orchestral scoring kind of a brass part. Um, 
because these sounds are a little bit brassy, and actually take it up a little bit and add just sort of this triumphal sort of scoring moment. So um, that sounded like this. So that's sort of the, the big crescendo of the song. I thought really quickly I'd show you kind of what a difference having these layers on tap actually makes. If we didn't have the pad in, for example, or if we never brought in uh, this ARP, uh, maybe just those three sounds, we just lose some of this extra fullness, especially when that right hand takes things up an octave because there's just not quite as much density to the sound. Now, I want to highlight that that's not necessarily a bad thing. If I knew what the band was playing for this set, or if I was in the room and the band sounded really full, I might actually choose to back these parts off and never even introduce them at all. It just depends on the amount of space that your band needs you to fill. Here it is again with those parts in. <laughs> So again, I'd never played this song before. A couple turnarounds in there took a while to learn, but the most important thing I was trying to do is just keep my parts really tightly focused. Even when the hands open up, I'm not trying to fill too much space because I have a lot of band that's gonna be filled in around me and I don't have the luxury of hearing what they're gonna do. Um, okay, so that's the first set. It was really fun. The second set was just two songs. This was led by Matt from Loop. Uh, really good friend of mine, love that guy. And it was great to be a part of this set as well. This set, I actually knew both of the songs uh, that we were gonna do, so that's kind of a luxury. Goodness of God and Living Hope, both in B flat. Uh, for Goodness of God, because I wasn't playing the piano parts, uh, I decided to build a custom patch in Patch Builder so that I could have really specific sounds in mind that would give me sort of a palette to be able to really nail the aux keys parts and have some flexibility to express in that. And then for Living Hope, actually used the song-specific patch that we have on our website, and then I just took out the piano parts because, again, playing aux keys, and then I added in a little ambient bell part, actually a copy of the retro bells sound uh, that I used uh, earlier, talked about, uh, because I wanted a, a little bit of color that I could apply to the chord triggers in the left hand, uh, free hand in the right. But one other thing I wanna to talk to you about really quickly is just how I'm preparing all of this stuff because you might notice I have these five sounds already loaded into my patch list. When I'm building patches and I need to do it quickly, this is the first thing I do is just add, in main stage at least, one sound from each section. And then uh, I'll browse here and you can see because these have been pulled from the browser, uh, it's gonna stay that way, right? The library is gonna follow along. So I'm already in the categories I need to be inside a patch builder, I can really quickly grab a new sound. Then when I'm ready, I'm just gonna select them all and combine them via new patch from selected patches. Patch builder is gonna create the layered patch for me. And then from there, uh, I can do it again, right? I can go back to the library, pick all new sounds. So all these individual uh, custom patches that I made for this set were done with this method, just iterating on these five slots. Then I don't have to worry about creating new patches over and over and over. When I've got something made, I'll just change the name patch attributes, time signature, change tempo, that sort of stuff so that I can reference it in the moment. But having these five patches just ready to go when you're prepping saves you a little bit of time because you're not loading stuff in and out over and over and over. So Goodness of God, almost a country song, honestly, in terms of the aux keys parts. The whole album from Bethel is a little bit like that. So for this one, I use the B3 organ again, uh, the Noisy Roads which again, may or may not already be in Sunday Keys for you if you're a Sunday Keys user, but it's coming in the July 2021 update. And then lastly, uh, this Silky Velo Strings again, string pad. 
So when we hit that first chorus, all my life you have been faithful. It's got the organ in there nice and chill. All my life you have been so good with every breath that I make. Oh, I will see. Ooh, Matt, how do you get that low? The goodness of God. Woo! Nice and low. All right. Anyways, uh, then for the second verse, we added in this Noisy Roads. There's an EP on the original recording. It just sounds killer. This Noisy Roads is sampled from my roads to capture the mechanical noise, not just the actual signal from uh, the EP. And it's super cool because it's just feels alive. Here, this is probably the biggest risk I took from the aux keys perspective because I'm not playing piano. I don't know who's going to be playing piano, but that part I just did is, is pretty steppy, meaning I'm, I'm hitting a lot of changes. But uh, I was confident that uh, those changes would be hit pretty universally by the band because that's sort of the riff of the tune, right? And I also stayed true to melody, didn't riff outside of that so that even if the piano player does something different... I'm not going to get too far out ahead of them or step on their toes. So then this song's just building as we go. Eventually this pad opens up, the mod wheel opens up uh, for your goodness. Goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Um, then by the time we get to that final chorus. All my life you have been faithful. And one thing I really like about this string pad, two things actually, it's really velocity responsive, which is awesome for aux keys parts like this, because even with the mod wheel up, if I play quietly at a low velocity, that pad chills out. But if I really dig in, get an extra resonance that filters nice and bright and the volume increases. So it's just perfect for this sort of background texture stuff because you're able to diamond one chord harder and then just sort of sink into the next or accent specific notes in a melodic sequence and the string pad is just gonna go right along with you, which is absolutely killer. And then the other thing I really like about this string pad is that the sound fades out over time, both the filter and the volume. It gets a little bit quieter and closes down, just a smidge. That initial ta attack is a little bit more intense than everything that follows it, which is great, again, for the aux keys roll. The organ doesn't have any volume modulation. It's not velocity responsive as an organ should be. It's not like that in real life. Uh, the Rhodes is fading, the strings are fading, that organ stays constant, which means that the beginning of a diamond chord, uh, you notice the strings and the Rhodes, and then that organ sort of, it feels like it fades in. It's psychological, right? It's not fading in, but everything else is sort of fading out around it, leaving room, which is really cool because then I can hit a chord. Let's have, say I have this rotor down a little bit. And I can bring up that rotor. Turn. Bring that stuff down and let it fade. So Matt's set list was actually uh, in the same key for both songs. So I was going to hold this guy out and let them fade into Living Hope. So go ahead and change patches, still sustaining, and then in the ambience of this next tune. So like I said, Living Hope is a modified song patch. So the original is an E flat. I used Easy Transpose to bring it down to both play in and here in B flat. So we've got these really great ambient pads. Took the piano out and gave myself this uh, ambient sound in the right hand, the retro bells again. So here, it's a lot of octaves in the left hand. 
There's some really great guitar parts on this song, and I didn't want to get in the way of those, so I'm doing a little bit of self-mixing on this song where the parts are just not that loud for a lot of the song because I know there's going to be other stuff going on that deserves to be heard, it deserves to be featured prominently. So I'm just going to hang out. But with song patches, the beauty is I've got all these great little textures happening in the background. Absolutely killer. I'm able to do that stuff and still have my right hand free to sort of accent what's going on. Then as we get uh, to the very end, I'm bringing my mod wheel up, and of course, song patches are moving through the song sections for me automatically and giving me notes on what those parts are. So then we get to the... So again, uh, self-mixing here in both of these set lists was a big consideration. This patch, there's a lot of parts going on here, but the overall volume's not that intense. And that's because I think for me, this is just like the call of where the aux keys should sit in the mix. Now, of course, the mix engineer can pull parts up or down, but I wanted to give them a pretty useful dry signal that they could do more with if they felt like they wanted to. So talking about self-mixing, and then we'll wrap this up here. Uh, there's some of those choices going on between like these first two songs on the set list here uh, for the first set list. Like here we are at full, full volume for this guy. And then we go to the second song and we just never hit that level of, of volume or at least that level of fullness, even at its biggest. And that's because listening to the recording, kind of thinking about what everybody else is going to be contributing musically, there's just not a need for that much volume, that much density from the aux keys parts. And then You Are the Lord sort of in between. Goodness of God is, is pretty loud, uh, but it's really focused. And then Living Hope does kind of sit a little bit further in the background. So that's how I approach these two set lists for the Worship Innovators Conference online. Again, if you were able to attend the conference, I hope you found it helpful and I hope that you've enjoyed looking at the process of how I put these songs together, how I approached adding these sounds in to play these set lists. Okay guys, well, if you found this look behind the scenes helpful, leave a comment and let us know right now because we could do more videos of this nature, tear down future set lists, give more insight into the ways that you can approach preparing for songs you've never played before, or maybe in this aux keys position at your church. If you're a worship keys player or a worship leader and you found this video helpful, we'd really appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up, leave a comment, share it with a friend. If you really want to make sure that you don't miss our future videos, we put out a new video every week, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. That's a great way to support us and we really appreciate it. If you're ready for next steps, if you want some more resources, we have free training, free patches, and amazing resources over on our website. We'll put a link in the description to some of those so you can check them out if you need some more help. I'm David from Sunday Sounds. Thanks for checking out this video. Have a great day.